QuickBooks Desktop 2023, fill with inventory connected to PO or purchase order. Let's do it within two weeks. QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Sample Rock Castle Construction Practice File provided by QuickBooks going through the setup process, maximizing the home page, going to the view dropdown, open windows to have the open windows list open, reports dropdown, going down to the company and financial, P&L, profit and loss or income statement, tab 0101242123124 January to December I'm going to increase the font size by going to the customized report fonts and numbers change the font go to 12 okay yes please okay I know I'm doing this quickly but this is going to be the routine format that we do each and every time here so we're going to go to the company and financial and then down to the balance sheet standard change the date to 1231 Two, four, I believe is the year we want. Customizing the report up top, fonts and numbers. Change that font size, bring it on up to 12. Okay, yes please, and okay. All right, now we got the open windows going back to the home page, and we've been considering the vendor section here. So remember that the vendor section represents money eventually going out to someone else, someone who's providing us goods and services that we're using within the business. The easiest way to pay someone else would just to be having electronic transfers, for example, for expenses, which would be like using a check form, but we might be using the bank feeds in that situation. It would be the most easy way to just basically be dependent on the bank feeds or we might write physical checks in which case we want to write the checks and then we want to uh, let the checks clear and reconcile the checks with a bank reconciliation or we could move to an accrual process where we enter the bill first which increases the accounts payable and then we pay the bill with in essence a check form but this is gonna be a special check that we talked about before that's decreasing the accounts payable. The other side's decreasing the checking account. And then we added the inventory. So you'll recall last time we entered the purchase order and now we're thinking about the next step in the inventory process. With inventory, the question will be, do I want a perpetual inventory system or a periodic inventory system? If you have a periodic inventory system, you might not be using the inventory within QuickBooks because that's the perpetual inventory system and instead track the inventory outside on say an Excel sheet or something like that where you would count the inventory periodically end of the day, end of the week or end of the month and then make your adjustments on a periodic basis. We might talk more about that in a future presentation or if you want to track the inventory perpetually within QuickBooks which does add a level of complexity to the process which we'll talk about a lot more in our sample problem then uh then then you're going to track the inventory now even if you're tracking the inventory you still might not be using purchase orders because the purchase order would only be used if you have the capacity to request inventory without actually paying for it until you receive it so you'll recall that if you like make a purchase to something like amazon Dot com and you request something that you're gonna buy there as an individual typically you pay for it when you make the purchase and so you've already paid for it therefore financial transaction happening at that point in time the purchase order would be that scenario we are imagining for example ordering something from China like a hundred cups or something like that and we have the capacity to request the hundred cups without actually paying for them until we receive it so then when we receive it then that's going to be the step we're at here that's when we enter the bill at that point in time because now we've got the inventory and then we're going to pay that bill at a future point in time so that's going to be the process in essence we have a purchase order requesting inventory we imagine the inventory coming in let's say to our warehouse for example 
and then we're going to see we're going to open up the the cups and we're going to see a bill in there with it and we can compare the the inventory that we've received to the purchase order and then we can enter the bill at this point in time so let's take a look at some of the open purchase orders the purchase orders will not be reflected on the financial statement so to track the open purchase orders the open requests we could go to the vendor center which could be here or we can go to the vendor drop down vendor center here we've got the two tabs up top the vendors and the, the transactions if we got a particular uh, the receipt of inventory we can find then that particular vendor look it up that way or we might look at all the transactions related to vendors consider the purchase orders and then possibly filter the purchase orders by all the purchase orders this would include the ones that had been fulfilled or we might search for the open purchase orders so here are the open purchase orders let's look at this first one here double clicking on that purchase order so this is what was requested we sent this out to this vendor and requested lumber the quantity 35 at a rate of 100 and the amount 3500 so now let's imagine we got we've got that and uh, we're going to enter the bill for it and increase the inventory so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this i'm going to close this back out and then go back to my home page so that we can see the process and we've got the purchase order now let's imagine we're receiving the inventory here i'm going to say we've received it uh, with a bill so that's typical process i'm going to paste the vendor in here so there's the vendor and when i hit tab then it's going to say there's an open purchase order exists uh, for this vendor do you want to receive against one or more of these orders i'm going to say yes notice this is connecting for us very nicely this is a really nice kind of feature and again it's a level step up from what you might think of from just an accounting perspective if you just learn debits and credits as the building blocks of creating the financial statements and like an accounting course or something like that uh, then you might not really imagine all the all the added benefits that can come into play with these things that aren't really necessary when you're thinking about just debits and credits to build the financial statements but clearly from a bookkeeping standpoint they make the organization a lot easier so i'm going to say yes we're going to check off this uh, purchase order i'm going to say okay and then it populates our bill for us so here's going to be the population we've got the vendor we've got the date we've got the address and the amount 1500 that pulled in automatically given by the purchase order now notice down here when we looked at the bill before i'm gonna i'm going to close out it's got the purchase orders to be received one here just to note i'm going to close this out though when we looked at the bill before we got the two tabs down below the expense tab is the one that we would be using when we're just when we know the expense account or we know the account that we want to be entering the bill for so if it was like a utility bill or if we're buying like uh, office supplies or something like that but if we're buying inventory we have to go to the items the items are something we haven't really talked about yet how to set them up that's going to be a, a vital point to make the whole process as easy as possible once the items have been set up then this connection process is a lot easier to do with a bookkeeper that might not know all everything about about how the whole system is working right that's the point we want to make sure that we can set things up so the data input process whether it be done by ourselves or someone else is as easy as possible so we'll talk about how to set up uh, the items in uh, future presentations but the reason they're necessary is because we don't want to just hit an account like inventory meaning from a journal entry standpoint you might just say what's going to happen well there's going to be an increase in accounts payable because it's a bill the other side is going to go to inventory why don't i just go over here and type in inventory on the expense side of things because we're tracking on a perpetual inventory basis and we want to track not only inventory but the sub ledger of the kind of inventory we have and then use our flow assumptions which in in the quickbooks desktop is the average uh flow you know there's first in first out in the weighted average method if that doesn't make a lot of sense we'll talk a little bit more about it when we actually go through the practice problems in uh quickbooks we'll we'll dive into that in a bit more detail but that's the basic rationale now i'm not actually going to record this i'm just going to close this out i'm going to imagine what's going to happen though we're going to increase the accounts payable the other side's going to go to inventory i'm going to close this out so i don't add any data to it and i'm going to say no and then i'm going to go to the balance sheet 
So we are in the balance sheet. If I scroll down on the balance sheet, we know we entered a bill, which is an increase to the accounts payable. That's what a bill does. So I can double click on the accounts payable, drilling down on it, changing the first date from 010124. And so there we have it. Now this first one, I don't think was inventory related. I'm gonna double click on it, drill down on it so we could see the bill and we could see it's not inventory related because it's on the expenses side of things, or at least it's not tracking the inventory within the system on a perpetual inventory method. Closing this back out, if I choose like this one here, I think we'll have inventory. If I double click on it, we're gonna say, okay, there's the bill. We could see it's got an inventory because it's using the items tab. And so here's the inventory. Now, this particular company is a little bit more confusing with inventory because there's basically two kinds of inventory tracking that you may be in. And you wanna make sure that when you're doing bookkeeping, you're understanding kind of the, the specialties of the fields that you are in. So you could have like a, a job cost system or one in which the inventory is gonna go through the work and process account, meaning you're gonna buy raw material, it's gonna go through work and process, and then you'll have the finished goods, which typically would be a job cost system, but could also be a process uh, cost system. And then you could have the kind of inventory system where you just buy inventory, you mark it up, and then you sell it. That would be the uh, more easy way for the accounting process, because when you buy the inventory, the bill then would just be recording the inventory at the cost, increasing the accounts payable, also increasing the inventory side. And then when you sell the inventory, you're gonna have to decrease the inventory, record the expense at that point in time, the cost of goods sold. We'll talk more about the sales side of things when we get to uh, the revenue cycle. So I'm gonna close this back out. Notice that we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on a, on a job cost system. I believe we have a course that goes specifically into that if you want to, but that's more of a specialty area as is a process cost system. So those are things to keep in mind in terms of your type of business, what kind of bookkeeping you wanna do. If you're a bookkeeper, do you wanna specialize in those uh, particular areas? If so, then you gotta do some specialized work within them. Okay, and then up top, we've got inventory, which is gonna be an asset account. So notice if we're tracking inventory in the system, we are doing an accrual thing at that point in time, because if it was a cash based system, we would just be expensing the inventory when we bought it, if we paid cash for it, right? Or whenever we paid cash for it, that's when we would be uh, recording the transaction to inventory. And in an accrual system, how we normally record inventory, we have to go to an accrual system generally because we want to track the inventory on the balance sheet. Uh, and then we want to want to record it as an expense, not when we bought the inventory, but when we sell the inventory. So the inventory is going to go up when we buy the inventory for the cost. And then when we sell the inventory, we're going to expense it in the form of cost of goods sold, which we'll talk about uh, next time. And we're also going to have to record the sales price when we sell the inventory and that's the kind of stuff that the quickbooks system will help you to do if using a perpetual inventory system although it does kind of complicate things a bit you might ask is it possible for me to just to just expense the inventory when i pay for it have an easier inventory system if you don't have that much inventory on hand all the time like you could try to do something like that right you could try to stay on a cash based system but note that oftentimes your, your taxes, if you have a substantial amount of inventory, the IRS will want you to be more on an accrual based system with regards to inventory. So you wanna make sure to talk to your accountant about your inventory system and you have one that's appropriate for you. But in any case, if I double click on the inventory and change the first date 010124, so now we've got the inventory increasing with a bill. So whenever we entered the bill, increases accounts payable, increases the inventory and then it's going to be decreased with the invoice because the invoice is the sales document that's going to be decreasing the inventory i'm going to close this back out now the reason uh, we couldn't we have to use that item to record the inventory is because we have related sub ledgers tracking the inventory so if i go to the reports up top and go down to the inventory and go to the inventory valuation Notice that all other reports other than the balance sheet and income statement are really feeding into or connected to providing more detail about the balance sheet and income statement. I'm just putting the end of the year here. And so there we have it. So now we've got the, the amounts of inventory here. We've got the average cost. So it's using a weighted average cost, I believe, in, a, in terms of a flow assumption 
FIFO, LIFO weighted average. And then this is the asset value, which is at the 30,683.38. That should tie out to what is on the balance sheet, 30,683.38. So that's the general idea. Let's jump back on over to the homepage real quick. So notice when we go through the inventory process, inventory is of course gonna flow through from the vendor side of things to the customer side of things. So just a quick recap on what inventory is gonna do. We're gonna request the inventory if we have a system where we can request before we pay for it, like requesting coffee cups from China or something like that. Then that's, and that's not gonna record any transaction. Then we imagine we get the coffee cups with a bill in it we're gonna make sure we're gonna count the coffee bug cups and compare them to the purchase order to make sure that we got the right order. Then we're gonna enter the bill into the system. This records the transaction increasing the accounts payable and it increases the inventory because we had received the inventory at that time with the use of the item, which also increases the sub ledger tracking the items on a weighted average uh, method. Uh, so, and then of course we can pay for the bill in a similar way uh, that, that we've seen in the past and we might have adjustments that we need to do for inventory from time to time possibly we have like over short adjustments for example and then uh, in the future we're going to sell the inventory and notice if you're using inventory you kind of have to use the sales forms like a like a sales an invoice or a sales receipt so even if you're on a cash basis typically you have to use a sales receipt because if you just use a deposit then you can't track the items uh, properly generally. So then you record a sales receipt or an invoice. And if it was an invoice, we'll talk about next time, it would increase the accounts receivable. The other side would be going to sales, but that would be for the sales price. Notice you need that inventory item to know when you enter the transaction, the difference between the sales price and when you go to a grocery store, that's what you see on the, on the check or the sales price, but it also needs to know the cost so that it can decrease the inventory that is on the books at cost and record the related expense related to us using the inventory at that point in time, cost of goods sold. So that gets a little bit more confusing. The sales side of the inventory gets a little bit more confusing because that's when we see the two different uh, plays of, of, the, of the cost and the sales price. So we'll talk about that more when we get down to the customer section. But again, when you look at the inventory cycle, the inventory cycle will be part in the vendor side because we're buying inventory and part in the customer side because of course we're then going to be selling the inventory.